Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Less than 10 years ago in 2008, bad actors on Wall Street brought the economy of our country to the brink of collapse. Because of their greed, recklessness, and deceit, millions of Americans lost their jobs. Families were thrown out of their homes. Seniors saw their life savings evaporate before their very eyes. Washington bailed out the big banks and they said they were too big to fail. But the American people never got a bailout. The American people were told, you're on your own. And in seven states, including my home state of Rhode Island, we're still working to recover jobs that were lost in this great recession. And that's why it was so important two years later when Congress passed and President Obama signed into law the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010. This law was a landmark victory for the American people, especially the American consumer. And that's why it's so disturbing that Republicans now want to take us back to the days of too big to fail, a time when powerful Wall Street special interests exploited consumers and small investors, and our entire economy was put at risk. The bill before us today, which I call the Wrong Choice Act, will turn Wall Street into the Wild West again, and it will empower the big banks to do what they want at the expense of honest, hardworking families. This bill takes us back to an era when financial institutions could wipe out someone's retirement and foreclose on innocent homeowners completely unchecked. This bill repeals common sense requirements that require financial advisors to act in the best interest of their clients. It will allow bad actors to push bad products on working people and seniors in exchange for paybacks. This bill protects forced arbitration clauses and allows companies to require their customers to waive their right to a jury trial and deny them their day in court when their rights are violated. And by the way, that includes service members, brave men and women, who have worn the uniform of the American Armed Forces. Unfortunately, service members and veterans are often targeted for financial fraud and unscrupulous creditors because they're held to a higher standard of debt repayment. In addition, their frequent time away from home makes it harder for our service members to identify scams. The CFPB has already taken at least 12 major enforcement actions directly protecting service members and their families. In 2016, the CFPB fined Navy Federal Credit Union $28 million for illegal debt collection tactics. The CFPB took action against two for-profit colleges, ITT, Technical Institute, and Corinthian Colleges, both of which had been linked to predatory treatment of service members and veterans. The now defunct Corinthian was ordered to provide $480 million in debt relief to defrauded students, including service members. In 2013, the CFPB ordered high-cost small-dollar lender Cash America to pay up to $14 million in restitution and a $5 million penalty for violations of the Military Lending Act. And just two months ago, the CFPB sanctioned an auto lender that harassed and preyed on service members. Security National Automotive Acceptance Company threatened that they'd contact commanding officers about debts that our veterans incurred and lied to our brave men and women in uniform about their obligations. And they've been held accountable because of the CFPB. The CFPB was created to protect families and small businesses. And since 2010, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has returned nearly $12 billion to 29 million consumers in all 50 states. More than a million consumers have used the CFPB's complaint database, and nearly all of them have received a timely resolution to their issues. The CFPB held Wells Fargo accountable to the tune of $100 million after they opened millions of fraudulent accounts for customers without telling them. Wells Fargo surreptitiously collected fees from these victims, and every dime was returned to consumers because the CFPB was on the job. The sole purpose of the CFPB's existence is to ensure that bank loans, mortgages, and credit cards are fair, affordable, understandable, and transparent. And that's exactly what it's doing. And Republicans want nothing more than to kill it. No honest, hardworking Americans should be exploited when they're taking out a mortgage, trying to pay off their college debt, buying a car, or opening a bank account. But that is what's going to happen if the Republicans get their way today. Passage of this bill will confirm what so many Americans believe, that Washington works for big business, the very rich and powerful special interests, but not for them. Let's remind ourselves, the American people sent us to Washington to work for them. They didn't send us here to fight for the big banks and credit card companies that already have too much power here in Washington. Reject this bad bill, vote for the American people, protect consumers, and very strongly vote no. And with that, I yield back.